God blesses you with a gift, amen. And when your cup money for it's time for you to pour off into another cup, amen. 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 So, uh, they didn't give me no, I got one, one name, huh? You got a name? Oh, we're going to let uh, Sister Sharika Henderson introduce this, this young man, I, and I, I already know that he made an impression on someone today through, through uh, me eavesdropping on this conversation, so yeah, I believe it's going to be good, amen, I believe it's going to be good, so Sister Sharika, she's going to uh, benefit with us knowing his name, and we're going to move on from there. Good morning, everyone. I would like to introduce to you all Mr. Arthur A. Hunt. He's the son of Willie May Clyde, amen. He belongs to the church, Ebenezer M.B. Church in Coma, Mississippi, on the leadership of Pastor Pryor Hitler. And some of the reasons he liked to recite this speech is to honor Dr. King, to honor his parents, grandparents, and siblings, and to deliver the entire speech for those who may have never heard it, and to do his part in keeping the dream alive. Mr. Arthur A. Hunt. Give honor to God and uh, we have my life to this great to the pulpit staff, I mean the church and all that. I am here to recite in its entirety to Dr. Martin Luther King, I have a dream speech. Uh, August 28, 19, August 28, 1955, in Sumner, Mississippi, Emmett Till was murdered. August 28, 1963. Dr. King stood on the Lincoln Memorial steps mm -hmm. and he said this speech, and I will say it in its entirety, mm -hmm. not part of it, just in entirety. Amen. <clears throat> I'm happy All right. to join with you today in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. Five score years ago, a great American in whose symbolic shadow we stand today signed the uh, Emancipation Proclamation. This momentous degree came as a great big light of hope for millions of Negro slaves who've been seared in the flames of withering injustice. Uh, this came as a joyous daybreak to end the long night in their captivity. But 100 years later, the Negro still is not free. 100 years later, the life of the Negro is still languishing in the corners of American society, finding himself in exile in his own land. Oh, yes, oh, yes. But we come here today to traumatize a shameful condition. In a sense, we come to our nation's capital to cash a check. By which the architects of this republic wrote the magnificent words of the Constitution and Declaration of Independence. They were signing a promissory note which all Americans were to fill in. This was a promise to all men, yes, black men as well as white men, to be guaranteed the unalienable right of life and liberty in the pursuit of happiness. But it is obvious today that America has defaulted on this promissory note in so much that the citizens of color are concerned. Instead of honoring a sacred obligation, America has given the Negro people a bad check. A check that has come back marked insufficient funds. But we refuse to believe that the bank of justice is bankrupt. We refuse to believe that there are insufficient funds and the great faults of opportunity of this nation. So we come here to cast this check, a check that will give us the fund the man, the riches of freedom, and the security of justice. So we have come here now to this hollow spot to remind America of the fierce urgency of now. For this is no time to engage in the luxury of cooling off, nor take the tranquilizing joy of progressivism. Now is the time to make real the promises of democracy. Now is the time to rise above the dark and desolate valley of segregation to the sunlit paths of racial justice. For now is the time to lift our nation above the quicksands of racial injustice to the solid rock of brotherhood. For now is the time to make justice the reality. 
idolatry, all of God's children. It will be fatal for our nation to overlook the urgency at this moment. Yes, yes, yes. This sweltering summer of the Negro, all legitimate discontent will not pass until there's a vigorating autumn of freedom and equality. 1963 is not an end, but a beginning. For those who hope the Negro needs to blow off steam and would not be content, will be in for a rude awakening that the nation will turn to business as usual. There will be neither rest nor tranquility in America until the Negro is granted his citizenship rights. The world will revolt, will continue to shake the foundation of this nation until the daylight of justice emerges. Well, that's something I must say to my people. The one who stands in the one threshold is headed to the palace of justice. In this process of gaining our rightful place, let us not be guilty of wrongful deeds. We shall not seek to satisfy our thirst for freedom by drinking out of the cup of bitterness and hatred. We shall forever conduct our struggle on the highest planes of dignity and discipline. We shall not allow our creative protest to degenerate into physical violence. For again and again, we must rise to the majestic heights of meeting physical force with soul force. This model of new military scene that's engulfed our Negro community must not lead to the distrust of all white people. For as evidence that many of my white brothers are here today have come to realize that their destiny is tied in our destiny. They have come to realize that their freedom is unquickly bound to our freedom. We cannot walk alone. And as we walk, we must make the pledge we will always march ahead. We cannot turn back. And for those who are asking our devotees, when will you be satisfied? We cannot be satisfied as long as the Negroes are a victim of unspeakable horrors of police brutality. We cannot be satisfied as long as our bodies, heavy from the fatigue of travel, cannot gain large into the motels of the highways or the hotels of the cities. We cannot be satisfied as long as the Negroes' basic mobility is from a small ghetto to a larger one. We cannot be satisfied as long as our children are robbed of their adulthood and stripped of their dignity with signs stating four whites only. We cannot be satisfied as long as a Negro in Mississippi cannot vote and the Negro in New York feel he has nothing to vote for. No, no, we cannot be satisfied and we will not be satisfied until justice rolls down like water and righteousness like the mighty stream. Now I'm not unmindful. That some of you have come here today from great trials and tribulations. Some of you have come fresh from narrow jail cells. Some of you have come from areas by which your quest for freedom has left you staggered by the words of persecution and staggered by the winds of police brutality. You have become the veterans of creative suffering. So continue to work that faith. That unarmed struggle is redemptive. So go back to Mississippi. Go back to Alabama. Go back to South Carolina. Go back to Georgia. Go back to Louisiana. Go back to those slums and ghettos of our northern cities knowing this situation can and will change. We shall not continue to wall in the valley of despair. So I say to you today, my friends, even though, even though we're faced with difficult times of today and tomorrow, I Still have a dream. A dream that is deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. These truths we hold to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, Sons of former slaves and sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream today. I have a dream living down in Mississippi, a state that is sweltering in the heat of injustice, sweltering in the heat of oppression, will one day be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Yes, yes. I've dreamed that even now in the state of Alabama, with this vicious racist, with this governor having his lip driven with the world of the position in another occasion, right there in the state of Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day every valley will be exalted. Every 
hill and mountain will be made low, the rough places will be made plain, the crooked places will be made straight, and that all the glory of the Lord will see the flesh, all the flesh will see it together. <clears throat> this is my hope. This is the faith that I go back to the south with. Because with this faith, we will be able to hear out of the mountain of despair a stone of hope. With this faith, we will be able to unjangle the cords of the, the, cords of the nation to a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. With this faith, we will be able to pray together, to struggle together, to go to jail together, to stand up for freedom together, knowing that we'll be free one day. Yes. This will be the day. Oh, this will be the day when all of God's children will be able to sing with new meaning. My country tis to be. Sweet land of liberty of thee I see. Land where the Father dies with a pilgrim's pride on every mountainside. Let freedom reign. And if our nation is going to become great, these things must become true. So let freedom reign from the potential hilltop to New Hampshire. Let freedom reign from the mighty mountains of New York. Let freedom reign from the highly allegation of Pennsylvania. Let freedom reign from the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado. Let freedom reign from the curvaceous slopes of California. But not only that, let freedom reign from Stone Mountain in Georgia. Let freedom reign from Lookout Mountain in Tennessee. Let freedom reign from every hill and Moe Hill and Mississippi, from every mountainside, let freedom reign. Once this happens, once this happens, once we allow freedom to reign, once we let it reign, from every village and every hamlet, every state and every city, we will be able to speak up that day when all of God's children, black men, white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, we all be able to join hands and sing the words of that old Negro spiritual. Free at last, free at last, great God Almighty, we're free at last. Amen. Thank you. 